Then the sixth angel blew his trumpet, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound to the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour, the day, the month, and the year were released to kill a third of mankind. This is so important because the releasing of the four winds is directly connected with the completed sealing of the 144,000. These four angels holding back the four winds appear in Revelation chapter 7, and they're given instructions directly connected with the sealing of the 144,000. There in Revelation chapter 7 and verse 1 it says, And after this I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, that no wind might blow on the earth or sea or against any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the earth and the sea, saying, and here's the clue, do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. So if we can determine when the four angels holding back the four winds are released, we confidently know that the sealing of the 144,000 is complete or finished. So when are the four angels released? Well, right here in trumpet number six and woe number two. As the Bible says, they're released to kill a third. Continuing on with woe two in verse 16, it says, the number of the mounted troops was 200 million. And this is how I saw the horses in my vision and those who rode on them. They wore breastplates of the color of fire and sapphire and of sulfur and the heads of the horses were like lion's heads and fire and smoke and sulfur came out of their mouths by these three plagues a third of mankind was killed by the fire and smoke and sulfur coming out of their mouths for the power of the horses is in their mouths and in their tails for their tails are like serpents with heads, and by means of them, they wound. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, nor give up worshiping demons and idols of gold and silver and bronze and stone and wood, which cannot see or hear or walk. Nor did they repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immorality or their thefts. Moving on, the sixth trumpet and the second woe actually includes Revelation chapter 10 and Revelation chapter 11. Because at the end of Revelation chapter 11 in verse 14, it says, the second woe has passed, the third woe is coming soon. So as Christians, we really want to start considering the sixth trumpet and the second woe as not only the last half of Revelation chapter 9, but also of Revelation chapter 10, as well as Revelation chapter 11. In Revelation chapter 10, John sees a mighty angel with a rainbow over his head. And the mighty angel had a little scroll in his hand. And he called out with a loud voice like a lion roaring. And when he called out, the seven thunders sounded. And when the seven thunders had sounded, John was about to write, but he heard a voice from heaven saying, Seal up what the seven thunders have said, and do not write it down. This is the only thing that is sealed in the scriptures. Daniel's prophecy is sealed, but it says there that it would be unsealed in the time of the end. A huge clue to unlocking the sealed seven thunders is located in Revelation 10 verse 7 where it says, But in the days of the trumpet call to be sounded by the seventh angel, the mystery of God would be fulfilled just as he announced to his servants the prophets. If a man wishes to understand the mystery of God and the sealed seven thunders, Consider reading Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, the Minor Prophets, and all the prophets through the lens of Revelation chapter 10 
and verse 7. In the second half of Revelation chapter 10 at verse 9, John goes to the angel and tells him, Give him the little scroll. And the angel replies to him, Take it and eat it. It will make your stomach bitter, but in your mouth it will be sweet as honey. And in verse 11, the angel tells John, You must prophesy again about many peoples and nations and languages and kings, implying that John had previously been prophesying. This vision of Revelation chapter 10 is a condensed repeat of Ezekiel's chapters 1 through 3. And so if a Christian wants to get God's expanded vision and interpretation, consider reading these beautiful words at Ezekiel's chapter 1 through 3. In Revelation chapter 11 and verse 1, John was given a measuring rod like a staff, and he was told to rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship there. And in verse 3, God would grant authority to his two witnesses, and they would prophesy for 1,260 days dressed in sackcloth. Verse 4 says, These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of all the earth. And so if a Christian wants to understand what the two olive trees and the two lampstands are, consider reading Zechariah chapter 4, where God clearly gives the interpretation of the two olive trees and the two lampstands. And verse 7 says, And when the two witnesses have finished their testimony, the beast that rises from the bottomless pit will make war on them and conquer them and kill them, and their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city that is symbolically called Sodom and Egypt, where the Lord was also crucified. So where was the Lord also crucified? The physical nation of Israel. And so how does God feel about the physical nation of Israel? The great city that is symbolically called Sodom and Egypt, where the Lord was also crucified. In verse 11 it says, But after the three and a half days, a breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet, and a great fear fell on those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies watched them. The sixth trumpet and the second woe is absolutely incredible. The angels are released to kill a third, also revealing the timing of the sealing of the 144,000. Uh, the sixth trumpet and the second woe includes the second half of Revelation chapter 9, it includes all of Revelation chapter 10, and the first half of Revelation chapter 11. And finally, at Revelation chapter 11 and verse 14, the Bible says, The second woe has passed. Behold, the third woe is soon to come.